Okay, so uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, unfortunately, the ballistic side of it is a little underdeveloped because uh, for some reason, even though Larry has given a ballistics programming talk at least six times in the history of the world, uh, there's not a single recording of it anywhere. I did find a random website that allowed me to send a request for the notes of the talk. I don't know if that'll actually go to Larry or not, but. Okay, so a little bit about me. <clears throat> so I'm currently a senior developer. Uh, actually, when I return from vacation, I'm gonna have a new job title. We're going with the service reliability engineer. Sorry, it's a typo. Um, so yeah, job for the win. Um, been programming Perl since 1998. So that was quite some times ago, quite some versions. Um, and back then, you know, the internet was much less developed. Uh, I don't remember what the, the Usenet aggregator I was using to see um, post to, to the Perl uh, Usenet. But anyway, it was mainly autodidact kind of scenario, me in a cubicle with a camel book and Programming Perl 6 is actually quite similar <laughs> these days. Um, so yeah, media theory nerd. These are my contact infos if you, if you are interested. I also make music. Okay, so into the ballistics part. Um, so the idea of this metaphor, ballistics is the science or art of designing and accelerating projectiles so as to achieve a desired performance. This is uh, according to Wikipedia. So in terms of like how you arrange ballistics, um, you select an intended destination, you estimate the force required to move the object, you make an attempt, you evaluate your effectiveness, and you correct the next attempt using the results from the first attempt. Um, this is from a very helpful write-up of Larry's talk <laughs> that you can find here at Brainworks by Ted Versant. Uh, so, the, like, is, is everybody familiar with the old, like, waterfall model of, of computer development, software development? Okay, so, in a broad scope, you could, like, that's definitely not the way to write software anymore. But on a smaller scale, I find that this pattern is actually exactly how I write software. <coughs> so, the spe specification... Maybe it's not some kind of formal, you know, written in stone sort of thing, but there's something I want to accomplish. Um, and then I try a design at it, uh, implement that. Um, that can be kind of at the same time, but sometimes it helps to put a little bit of thought into the design before you start coding. Um, you evaluate the effectis effectiveness and, and maintain that code. Uh, usually, I have a few <laughs> kind of jumps back there. Uh, back and forth. <coughs> so I think that the ballistic metaphor is pretty is pretty cool, um, and Pearl has a history of of trying different things and seeing what sticks. So um, we had a threading model in the early days, it didn't really work out very well. So that was replaced by eye threads. Uh, we had source fil we have source filters but we don't use source filters. Um, we started out with the blessed style OO. Uh, Moose came around and once Steven finalizes the project, we'll have class mop. And another example here is smart match and then don't use smart match. And so I really like this, this, uh, this, this idea that, yeah, the language can have stuff in it that maybe is not the best thing to use, but we're trying, you know, we're, we're getting somewhere. And you know maybe it doesn't you know land exactly where we thought it would, but you know there are still utilities for source filters, for instance. Uh, Pearl six and ballistics. So, <coughs> how am I going about learning the world's largest scope, uh, ar arguably, but I believe so, and proportionally least documented language? <laughs> so basically. Um, and this is why I, I liken it to the, the my glory days of learning Pearl 5, is your situation has improved since I started, but 
the documentation is still a known issue. Um, but essentially, the process that I've been doing is just trying different things. And I find that the landscape of Perl 6 is just, it's immense, but it's super fun to explore. Um, and I've had conversations with, uh, with core Perl 5 devs, like uh, Eve Orton, he cited, you know, kind of like the dark corners and crannies of Castle Perl 5 as, you know, something, it's kind of fun to like, once you get into it. Um, and I find that Perl 6, uh, using Larry's metaphor of Hobbit versus Lord of the Rings, it's the same, but just way more immense. It's the same level of fun and enjoyment for me, anyway. So, this is where the magic happens. You get the, the, you get the REPL. So if you fire up Perl 6 without any arguments, it's not waiting for standard in like Perl 5 does. <coughs> it actually presents you with a REPL. And um, I've had quite a few like uh, evenings with different friends, maybe with some beers. Uh, and <laughs> you just, it's pretty fun when you start just kind of diving in with this and showing people how if the consistency of this thing will therefore mean this thing does work and then wait, does that mean that works? And then you're doing all sorts of evil code <laughs> on the REPL, but it's, you know, you're learning at the same time. So this is kind of maybe a controversial slide, but this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Um, if you like Perl, like if you really like the, like the way Perl works, then you, sh you should give Perl 6 a try because I don't see how the most Perl Perl can upset you, right? Like you should give it, you should give it a shot at least because otherwise you're just like what you know. You're not interested in, in Perl itself. You're just interested in, you know, you, what you know. And, and to be fair, you know, like you don't have to agree with everything in the language. It's immense. Of course there's gonna be something that offends you or doesn't, rubs you the wrong way. <laughs> That's true. Um, so, yes, with the exception of one. Uh, no, but anyway, I don't find anything offensive in Perl 6 either because unlike Perl 5, the edge cases, corner cases, weird moments, um, they make more sense than they did in Perl 5, at least less surprising. Okay, whirlpools. On the other hand, if you're afraid to try Perl, Perl 6 because you might not ever be able to enjoy programming in another language, I can respect that. So, on to the terminal print portion of the talk. Um, this is a little library that I am proud to announce is almost out of beta. So, one night in Perl 6 chat around 2014, December 2014, I uh, shared this sort of little script that I had written. Um, by the way, this requires a few different changes now since uh, 6.c was released. Um, but the idea here is that it'll print some snow. I'll get, that, get to that in just a second. So here, here was my first, I had changed it so it was actually instead of just something you ran in the REPL, here, here it's uh, an actual command line program, or command line invocation I should say. Of course, it doesn't switch. That's not what I wanted. <sighs> Beautiful. Okay. Now we're talking. Should done. So, snowing. Now, 
<laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, can anybody tell me what's wrong with this? Well, yeah, yeah. So, and this is also quite a bit faster than it was. Uh, yes, that is, nope, there, there are three different snowflakes in there. It's just hard to tell at that speed. So yes, indeed, it's coming from the bottom up. And so, in one of my, the high points of my life, <laughs> Oh no! Uh. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna stay in the the silly mode here. So, in one of my high po high points of my life in my programming com career, I got this back. So, Larry had gone and golfed. Uh, a actual, uh, now you don't need to, to turn your screen over or invert your head. Wait, now it's falling. It's, it's kind of hard to see at that speed, but now it's coming from the top. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, this was a couple days la later. I'm not sure if Larry spent all that time uh, golfing it or not, but I, <laughs> I, I, I like to think he was looking up all these ANSI codes for a couple hours. Um, yeah, so basically what you get there, uh, so, not content to uh, provide me with that joy, Larry also brings up this idea, hey, falling cuneiform would be cool. Uh, you know, it would look like raining fish, mainly. Um, so me, whatever, I'm like, cuneiform, ideograms, okay, he's, mo he's talking about the matrix, but anyway, they're not the same language. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, I really appreciate this this part. So, if you want to do the matrix, you have to flip your script screen left to right, or flip it vertically, but then put each character back right side up. I think you need the green pill for that. So, <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so, what happened here is I got it in my head that it would be a good life goal to create a framework that would allow the golfing of the matrix. <coughs> so originally I looked into, especially with uh, Perl 6's native call, um, it's an FFI that like basically you don't have to do anything besides kind of declare the subroutine signature mo most of the time. And I was looking into a few of these things and they required like juggling uh, UN eights and buffs and turning them encoding them, decoding them. And I'm like, why am I actually doing this? What is, like Perl 6 has great Unicode support. And I started to look under the hood and it turns out that everything besides NCurses, which implements tput, seems to kind of shell out to tput and then use that as a, uh, as a pattern. <coughs> um, and so what I was saying here about the say back buffer is always worried about the speed. But, as we'll see in a second, the speed is not that bad. So. So yes, this is, this is my matrix printer. Uh, and yes, it is a bit slow at startup because we have to, thank you, thank you. You'd be surprised at how long that took to get together. So um, I just wanna quickly, I'll show you what I mean about the speed. Mm. 
making, this is using um, kind of like a hand rolled uh, async. Like uh, basically I was making sure that there wouldn't be thre thread safety of different, having different threads writing in to the same, uh, to the same grid object. Like underneath it's just an array that's keeping track of what goes where. So this is with the old style. Right, uh, let me actually reduce that a few more so we get a little bit more. Indeed. So, uh, should I let this finish? Well, no, we don't know how, like, let's, let's save some time. So the code, that code there, looks like this. So I have an initialized method on the grid object, creates a promise, then uh, starts a new thread in which I have a React block, and then I basically send it commands, uh, c send commands onto these supplies, and then React to them. And yeah, it was it. I was not like super happy with how this how this was looking, and certainly not with how it was performing. So, um, lucky for me, uh, Jonathan Worthington was willing to take some time out of his Friday night a couple weeks ago, and he fixed a constructor bug in a module called OO Monitors. Got to be kidding me. Okay, I think that was a, that's I know what that is. That was a little debug that got uh, fried with the stash. Now look at that, yeah. And so not only do we get the speed, all my async comes from this line. Well, the, this line and this line, and that's it. The rest is constructed exactly like a normal class. And I get fast, well, in my opinion, fast, it's certainly relatively fast, uh, thread safety for my for this uh, grid attribute here on the class so um, I find like I think this is a nice kind of recursive example like Jonathan's fixes were just a, like a very small number of lines that module is designed to make you know uh, implementing libraries like mine way easier and then my library is intended to make your life printing to the console uh, easier so I just thought that was kind of a nice example of how the depth of Perl 6, um, you know, it really goes from the super low level where you can add in, what it does is it adds this monitor keyword that then does a whole bunch of like munging and wrapping, kind of creates some, some accessors that are, and some locks and all this kind of stuff that I really don't, uh, I, you know, I can understand conceptually, but I definitely, would not be able to implement. So that's what that's what terminal print is. Um, it's the lowermost layer for all your fancy console printing needs. Um, your cursor movement can use ANSI codes or can actually get the the pattern from tput. Uh, it's async. You have a golf friendly syntax, and you can specify colors. Um, yeah, so that's that's the beginning, and in other words, you can make some fun screensavers. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Uh, are the yes, 
So the idea is, um, my original idea was like uh, in, in that quote you saw me talking about term GUI. Um, my original idea was to you know put you know have the everything in the kitchen sink library, but getting this to have the semantics and and stuff that I wanted took long enough that basically this is the underlying layer, and then when we add UI or anything like that, it'll be in another module that uses this. And part of that is that I <laughs> spent a lot of time like kind of implementing versions of that, and then realizing that they sucked. And <laughs> so part of the ballistic process for this, um, I'm at the stage now where I'm gonna try out different approaches to, to like animation and, and all that kind of good stuff um, without trying to bolt it onto this library and, and slow it down or, or mess it up. Because I know I'm not gonna get it right the first time. So some next steps, uh, full documentation, uh, move from what's essentially like, does it look right, <laughs> to actually having a real test suite. Um, another thing that's really nice is is it has scaffolding for having buffers in the background that you could be filling in um, while something else is displaying, and then you can quickly blit before between them. Um, provide even more golf niceties and write the uh, user interface layer which I've tentatively named BoxBrain. So, uh, special thanks to uh, Pearl6 on IRC, uh, and especially th good, like, props to Larry Wall, thank you so much. Um, for Pearl and Pearl6, I really, I'm so glad that we're on the other side of the release now, and, you know, <laughs> still waiting for that butterfly book, though. <laughs> So yes, you can find me on IRC as abstract, either with a five or a six, depending on how I'm feeling that day. Um, SoundCloud, again, and uh, yeah, booking.com is hiring. So let's, let's look at some code, though, real quick, just to show you what the, uh, oh, one last thing. This one's for you. Yeah. So I've also, this is really cool. You can, can't really see it down there. So now in Pearl 6, we have uh, signal handlers that you can add, like they're async. So you can basically add code blocks that will be run thread safe um, onto these signals. So here, I, I actually, if I didn't have that, the cursor would be missing because uh, I wouldn't have done my normal shutdown routine. So here I'm able to uh, catch the signals, uh, and I don't do anything nice with the error message, but I still uh, drop you out. And so what, the, what this actually ends up looking like, so this is the show love script. Make a little array of colors. Um, create the B was because this is actually from the original box brain code back before I decided that was a putting the cart before the horse. And so here we just put our uh, grid indices into a random, randomly sorted list, unpack them into X and Y, skip them if uh, they are divisible by three, or skip them unless they're divisible by three, and then uh, yeah, send them in print them out. And so this is a, an, an, an async example where I'm doing, you know, it's awesome to put a bunch of random stuff in your tests, by the way. So, uh, sarcasm. Um, yeah, so we, we do another random list. We grab, make sure so that they're kind of fat and like have space because I have not, I have not addressed the, uh, um, the wide versus normal character width thing yet, so I'm I'm kind of fudging that there. And uh, and yeah, that's that's the entire thing. So it's not quite golf, but uh, I'll get there one day. Um, any questions? All right, uh, I should have put that. You can find this at on GitHub. Uh, under abstract, if you're interested. 
and it's uh, already in the community, or already in the modules. But the new changes are not, so you're going to get the slow one, and so I merged to master. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>